On today's episode, I talk about WWE rumors surrounding the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania this year, and also some other interesting news regarding Corey Graves, the new Universal title, and the Cruiserweights on Raw. Will they continue to get shorter matches? All that and more right here on the Sunday Night Heat. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sunday Night Heat episode number six on No Holds Barton Wrestling Podcast, a show where myself, Kyle Masters, discusses and or rants about trending topics in the WWE. You can follow the show on Twitter at TSNH Show and by using the hashtag TSNH to join in the conversation. And after this is podcast is done it is posted on youtube and spreaker in full so go check it out on there guys today's topic is obviously the royal rumble and wrestlemania and we also got some other news for you this episode so guys it's been a long time since i've done one of these but wrestle god wrestlemania royal rumble has been just so huge this week and it looks like it's shaping up to be one of the greatest royal rumbles of all time i got lots of news for you on this royal rumble sunday that involves the royal rumble itself and wrestlemania and some other bits and pieces for you lots of rumors guys so take it with a pinch of salt they're just rumors not a lot is set in stone yet so We'll go ahead and just take it with a pinch of salt, like I just said. Um, if you guys didn't catch it, man, last night, I just want to uh, briefly go over here. NXT TakeOver was unfucking real man. That whole event, I had to catch it late. I didn't get home from work until about 12 o'clock. But, oh, my God, man, that was, again, like I, I've, I've seen other people uh, talk about it on Twitter and other podcasts saying, like, there's a, there was a lack of build for this TakeOver. But they did such a good job with, like, just the whole production of it, I couldn't believe they actually pulled that off, and it, it goes down in one of the greatest takeovers I've ever seen. Um, you had the women's match that exceeded expectations. That was insane. I didn't think it was going to be that good, man. There are a lot of great spots in that match. Go watch it if you've missed it, guys. That will probably go down as not one of the top, but one of the best uh, NXT women's matches I've ever seen. Um, and it looks like they're they're shaping the form here for a Nikki Cross and Oscar Few, which looks really, really promising. So I can't wait to see that. Um, Ty Dillinger, like I, I tweeted it out earlier, man, he is the most over guy I've ever seen. Maybe since Daniel Bryan. Like, <laughs> if Darby is, is fucking blind here and do not see how over this guy could be on the main roster, then I, I don't know what to do with I don't know what to do with WWE, man. Do you, you have to bring him up now. Last night, I he was the most over person more over than Shinsuke and Bobby Roode. People argue with me, but I think he got bigger pop than both those guys, even combined. It was just insane. And speaking of Shinsuke and Bobby Roode, what a fucking match, man. I didn't think Bobby Roode was going to come out on top on there. Me and Brandon, or Cobra Cappy here, both picked uh, Shinsuke Nakamura to retain here. But looks like they're going in a different direction with Bobby Roode. Now I know everyone's saying... They're saying, no, what? Oh, this means Shinsuke Nakamura is going to call up, man. Like, he's definitely going to be in rubble. No, he's not. Everyone calm down. They're going to have their rematch. He gets an official rematch. You know, the stupid WWE rematch clause. It's going to happen. It's going to be an NXT TakeOver Orlando before WrestleMania. I don't even think we're going to see Shinsuke for another year, man. Like, they don't have a next guy in line to be that top guy. People can argue to be Bobby Roode, but he's just going to get called up the same time as Nakamura, man. And then who are you left with, man? You got no one down there to, to be that top guy, so... He's going to be there, Nakamura, until they get a, a, a top guy like Nakamura or even close to it to run NXT. Bob Roode, probably in the next half year, he'll be called up maybe by SummerSlam. That'd be interesting to see. Um, but like I said, it, it was a crazy move on NXT's part, but I see what they're doing here. I can you know read between the lines, so good on that. And just the whole card last night was awesome. You know, I didn't really agree with uh DIY dropping the titles but you know that we weren't so me and corporate cap we weren't gonna be surprised if that happened and it did happen uh Ty Dillinger and Eric Young obviously we knew it was gonna happen with uh Sanity interfering but you know what it was such a good card last night man um lots of questions came out of it so we'll just see where NXT goes from there um so we'll go into the best part of the show and that is the Royal Rumble and man it's tonight guys I'm getting this podcast out to you uh right on the day of um it's crazy we got a lot of rumors coming out of the Royal Rumble, man. Tons and tons. Some I are really going to rant about. Some, you know, whatever. It, it looks promising. So we'll just start off with the bat. Or right out of the bat. Uh, Randy Orton or Bray Wyatt are said to rumor to win the Royal Rumble. Yes, you heard that right. Randy Orton or Bray Wyatt. 
There's been lots of rumors uh, appearing everywhere the last few days. Rumor has it that either Bray Wyatt or Randy Orton will win the Royal Rumble and face one another at WrestleMania for the WWE Championship in the main event. That being said, whoever would win the Rumble, the other would go on to the Elimination Chamber and win the WWE title. This would culminate, or culminate at WrestleMania with a match for the title and possibly control of the Wyatt family and, you know, Wyatt supremacy. Um, I do not want this to happen. I think it'd be a cool idea. Like, I love the idea of it, just not for the title. And it, it doesn't, it's not, to me, it's not a main event for WrestleMania. Like, you you think of WWE trying to make this WrestleMania greater than Wrestle Kingdom for New Japan. You can't headline it with Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton, man. Randy Orton is not a main event WrestleMania guy anymore. He's had his shot. He's past his time. Bray Wyatt, on the other hand, I'd love to see him get a title shot, like a world title shot, and see him hold it for a while. I just don't think this is his time right now. Um, maybe next year. Maybe he can win it next year. I don't think he'll win the Rumble this year at all. It'd be a good pick. I mean, I'd be, I wouldn't, if it happened, I wouldn't be mad at it, but I just don't want to see him face Randy Orton in the main event of WrestleMania. I don't think anyone does. Like, that's just not the way to go if you want to create a, you know, greater, a WrestleMania that's greater than Wrestle Kingdom 11. Um, it's just my opinion, guys. I, I don't know if anyone else agrees with that, but it, it's a weird rumor. I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, it, it, WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, any kind of big pay per view, you're going to get rumors everywhere, especially Royal Rumble with the surprise entrance and all that. Um, but the, this rumor right here that it ties in with the WrestleMania main event, I do not think Randy Orton will face Bray Wyatt for the title. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, the storyline makes sense, but them facing each other in the main event for the world title at WrestleMania, it's just no. Maybe I like a, a single brand and pay per view, whatever, but no, not WrestleMania. So let's move on with some Rumble rumors, I guess you can say it. Uh, Kenny Omega will not, I repeat, not be in the Royal Rumble. Uh, it came out the other day on a podcast or radio show. He said that he has plans to re-sign with New Japan Pro Wrestling for another year, and his goal is to win the IWGP title. He also said, uh, although, going, although going to WWE eventually is not out of the question, he just doesn't feel his time right now is right. And I do agree with him there. I don't think he should be in uh, this year's Royal Rumble. It doesn't really bother me. It's just he'd be overshadowed. There's so much. There's like a plethora of talent in this year's Royal Rumble that he doesn't need to be there. Um, if he does, and when he eventually does debut in the WWE, I think Omega should go to NXT first and get groomed there. I think if he goes right to Raw, it's just going to ruin it. He's going to get shoved down people's throats, and it's just going to ruin the... You know the essence of Kenny Omega and what he what he is as a professional athlete. Um, he just he wouldn't he wouldn't be the same by going to Raw. He needs to go to NXT. He needs to get like the whole Finn Balor and Kevin Owens treatment. You know, keep him there for like six to eight months. Um, get him get him to be the top guy at NXT, the face of NXT. Give him the title, and you know, just build some great NXT matches. You know, do what they what Owens and Balor did, man. And you can build Kenny Omega to be a great WWE superstar because right now he's not. Okay, guys, he's not built for WWE as much as a lot of people think he is. He's not. He's never wrestled on like a, a, a television show before because that's what WWE is. It's a television show. It's it's more of that than a wrestling company. So you know he needs experience in that, and that goes with uh, Nakamura. You see, Nakamura didn't go right to the main roster, and people thought he would because of his age. But no, he needs to get groomed in NXT because he doesn't have the experience of you know knowing what to do in WWE. And I guess I I've heard that both of them actually think that and triple h actually wants that and i'm I'm glad triple h thinks that way too because god i wish he was running raw and smackdown right now but he's doing such a good job with nxt i think that is the right way to go um nxt is going to need a number one star uh when it when uh bobby Roode and nakamura get the time to get called up so you know what better way than to have kenny omega sign with new japan for another year and after a year you bring up bobby Roode and nakamura and you have kenny omega run nxt down there with guys like up-and-comers like roderick strong and eric young if he's still down there with sandy you know you need you need to build nxt up and then you with WWE going out and getting more and more indie guys you just you can't have omega there right now so i'm glad he's chosen to go back to new japan for a year good for him man he's such such an incredible athlete, man. He's definitely one of the great pure wrestlers of our generation right now. So um, I'm glad that he chose this route instead. Um, but there are lots of people out there that still think that he's trolling. 
and that he's actually going to debut at the Rumble. Guys, relax, man. He, I mean, if he does, I'd be ecstatic. Like, I'd probably go nuts, but he's not going to. If he does, cool, but I don't, I, like, I won't lose sleep if he doesn't, if he's not there. And I'll be, okay, you know what? Good for him. He's going to go to New Japan World Wrestling, create some more epic matches. Like, we just saw him... Uh, I forget who he faced, man. It, it bugs me that I always forget this, but uh, he had one of a, a five-star match rated by Dave Meltzer at uh, uh, Wrestle Kingdom 11. So, you know what? I think he wants to still build uh, the Kenny Omega brand in, in New Japan for another year, and I, I'm, a, I'm all for that. I love that. So, good for Kenny Omega, and guys, it looks like he will not be at the Rumble, so, you know, don't get your hopes up if he's not there. Um, another rumor, I guess you can call it a rumor, uh, but it has to do with the Royal Rumble Championship matches. The betting odds took a huge shift the other day. I think it was yesterday or the day before. Um, and it had to do with Owens and Reigns. Uh, it had Reigns originally winning this in the betting odds. But now that it's shifted and Owens is favored to win his match now. He's a negative 210 to a plus 160 to Reigns. Uh, Cena is still slated to win at a negative 145 to Styles' is plus 105, so that's a really close matchup right there. Um, Charlotte is slated to win at a negative 750 to Bailey's plus 450, and Rich Swan is slated to lose to Neville with Neville with a negative 900 and Swan with a plus 500. Um, I think out of all this, Cena is definitely one of the predictable ones. Is more predictable, actually, than Owens. I think Charlotte and Neville are more predictable, but out of the two main title ones, I think Cena is more more predictable. I think a lot of people expect Cena to win against AJ Styles here. I mean, look, you're in the Alamo Dome, 60,000 people get John Cena's 16th championship. Vince is just looking at the dollar signs and it looks like it's a great way to to uh you know, make John Cena win the title in that type of environment is what I'm trying to say. So you know what? I actually agree with those betting odds. I don't know if I'll go with them. I can't really reveal my picks to you guys right now. I did them on a uh a paying, I think it was, uh, I forget what it was called. It's one of those, those websites where you pay to, and you, you pick and you can win prizes. Uh, the one I went to, you can win a trip to WrestleMania. So we'll see how I do. I'll, I'll let you guys know in the loan show how I did, uh, next week with, uh, with that. So let's move on to some more news about the Royal Rumble. We have, uh, some crazy news here. Um, I didn't know this. I, I had a feeling that some would be, but not the entire roster, but the entire NXT roster is to be backstage during the Royal Rumble match. So, according to Cage Side Seats, the entire NXT roster will be backstage during the Royal Rumble match, leaving further speculation that Dillinger and Samoa Joe will be debuting in the match. There's still no word yet on whether Nak- on why Nakamura dropped the title last night, and if this means he will be getting the call, which I just explained he probably won't be, and he shouldn't, and I really think it's a bad move to call him up right now. Um, in Dillinger's case, it was it was said on Lillian Garcia's podcast on their way to the ring. There is a major, major talk backstage to push Dillinger for the tenth entrant of the Rumble match. And guys, why not, man? It just it writes itself there, man. You you can make this. WWE wants us to be the greatest Royal Rumble of all time. That's a key factor right there, man. If you have Ty Dillinger in there at number 10 and you have that NXT crowd that went nuts for him last night, they're basically going to be the same crowd tonight at the Royal Rumble. Why not have him debut there, get a huge reaction? There's, I know there's uh, other people are saying he shouldn't because he can just hijack the entire Rumble like uh, Daniel Bryan two years ago um, when he should have won and, and the crowd just you know lost their shit. Um, but that's crazy, man. The entire roster... Uh, I don't know. Maybe WWE is trying to do it, though, to create less speculation instead of just having a few people back there. Um, but Dillinger needs to debut at number 10, 100%. It's just it's too perfect. He'd be a great fit for the SmackDown brand and maybe that IC title feud. I think uh, maybe he could even win it in the WrestleMania ladder match for the IC title if WWE chose to go that way at this year's WrestleMania. Um, as for Samoa Joe, it's almost a certain thing now that he's going to be debuting uh, soon or soon on the main roster or even tonight at the Royal Rumble. So, um, you know what? It's going to be a crazy night to see that tonight and see who, uh, who NXT, who from NXT is going to debut at the Royal Rumble and if they even have some other surprise entrances, which we'll get into later in the show. Actually, we'll talk about it right now. Um, next bit of Royal Rumble news. Rey Mysterio returning at the Rumble? Maybe. Um, his contract is currently over with Lucha Underground. He's come out and said that he is not re-signing. This further hints to a possible return to the WWE 
and uh, maybe a surprise entrant in the Royal Rumble match. It's being said, if he does, Mysterio will likely be put on the SmackDown Live roster or even a possibility as a top superstar on 205 Live. Um, my thoughts with that is, you know what? I've seen Mysterio. He's gotten into better shape since leaving WWE. Um, he, he wanted to do his thing in, with uh, Mexican wrestling, and he's done it, and he chose not to resign. So it looks like the arrows are pointing towards the WWE. Who knows? It might not be. He might be just trying to, you know, doing his own thing. Um, but it sucks that he <laughs> – this is all coming out now. And, it is, again, it's every major pay-per-view. You're always going to get the rumors. So, obviously – um, it's kind of ironic that Mysterious contract is over now and Royal Rumble's here, so everyone's gonna think that he's coming to WWE. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't care. I mean, I think Mysterio is a great cruiserweight. He was a great cruiserweight back in the day and a great WWE superstar. I think he'd be a perfect fit for that 205 Live division. It's growing that 205 Live division and the show is growing. You have certain superstars that look like they can carry the show, but I think Rey Mysterio would be a huge, huge addition to that. I don't, I mean, SmackDown's got a plethora of people already to make the show great and it's been great. And if you're going to add Ty Dillinger and Samoa Joe, I think Rey Mysterio would just get overshadowed. So I'm agreeing that he should be going to 205 Live and he could be one of the head guys on 205 Live. So I wouldn't have a problem with that. Mysterio, one of the, Definitely one of the greatest WWE cruiserweights of all time. So if Rey Mysterio comes tonight and he's a surprise entrant, you know what? I'm all for that. Good for him. Um, last bit of Royal Rumble rumor news. We got uh, the Royal Rumble winner itself. According to backstage reports, there is a winner currently penciled in right now. But I guess changes could go. I guess changes could happen to the winner Um at any time, even as far as minutes prior to the match, there are current major plans for the current penciled in winner, but there is a hard time, I guess, trying to put him in places that fit going towards WrestleMania. So, I mean, this is the most pre- unpredictable Raw Rumble I've seen in years. Um, there's so many different possibilities. So, you know what? I, I agree that it could change at any time. So, they have their guy penciled in right now. And we say the word pencil because, you know, if it could change at any time, even minutes before the match, you got to erase that, <laughs> obviously. Um, but, yeah, you know what? It's crazy. I can't, I can't even think of a, a surefire... <laughs> A surefied winner right off the bat, guys. Like I, I'm going with my original pick of Sami Zayn, but again, like I, I could see Joe winning it. I could see Balor coming back and winning it and trying to get hit back his Universal Title. Um, WWE could go the part time route and have either Undertaker, Goldberg, or Brock Lesnar win it. Um, they could see what they have in Braun Strowman and have him win it, but I think that'd be a really bad idea. I think you get a really negative reaction to that. And WWE's had their history in the last three or four years with negative reactions, and I really hope they're trying not to go that direction anymore. So hopefully they listen to the fans and they, they give the people what they want or they make a great Royal Rumble winner. Um, guys, I would want to see win again. Samoa Joe, Finn Balor, Undertaker, and Zayn. I think they'd be a perfect fit for the Royal Rumble this year in the winning category. Uh, guys, I think that should win are Braun Strowman. You know, I agree with that. It's really not his time. Maybe he can win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I can kind of see him doing a good job there and winning that. And maybe that could be a build from then. Um, and look what it did with uh, Baron Corbin. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, Goldberg shouldn't win it or Lesnar. Either of the two, I mean, they're, they're, they're setting up for their uh, final match at WrestleMania. None of them need to win it. It doesn't need to be for the Universal title. That would just kill WrestleMania's buzz and kill the Royal Rumble, man. They shouldn't go that direction. I really hope they don't. And I don't think in the first rumor, I don't think Orton uh, should win the Rumble or Bray Wyatt. It's not their time. And Orton, you know, has had his time. So, you know what? Those guys, I don't think, should be winning the Royal Rumble this year. Um, Move into the WrestleMania rumors. So, start right off the bat. The WrestleMania card is rumored to be finalized. And this is just a rumor, guys. It's not for sure set in stone. I got nine matches listed here by Dave Meltzer. So there's some on here that are probably going to be finalized and are probably a sure thing, but there's some on here that I don't agree with and I don't think Darby's is going to go in that direction. They're just rumored. So I'll list them off for you guys right now. Number one, Goldberg Lesnar. That's basically sure fired. And you know what? I don't care about that. Let them have their match at WrestleMania. I'm not angry about that. They can have their, you know, their last match there, whatever. Um, one I hear I'm pissed off about number two here is Undertaker versus Roman Reigns. And I'll get into that in uh, in a bit. And uh, yeah, I'll just get into that in a bit. I got a lot to talk about that. Um, another one, Styles versus Shane O'Mac. I really hope they don't do that, man. AJ Styles versus Shane McMahon. No one wants to, got, no one wants to see that. Like, seriously, no one wants to see Shane McMahon versus AJ Styles. AJ Styles is beyond that. And if it's true, WWE wants to be better than Wrestle Kingdom 11. You cannot have a good match with Shane 
as much as people want to say Shane still got it, man, look at him. Just go rewatch that WrestleMania match. Taker basically carried the guy through the match, and we've seen how bad he <laughs> he looked after. I know it was a Hell in a Cell match, but come on, man. Like, I don't think Shane and Styles can produce a WrestleMania quality match. It's just not in the books to to have this match. Maybe at like Elimination Chamber, but not nothing else like that. Not WrestleMania for sure. Uh, another one, Cena versus Samoa Joe. I'd love to see that, and I'd hope that's for the WWE World Title. That'd be really awesome to see. Uh, but I guess the rumors are that Styles is not supposed to go into WrestleMania with the title. So Cena versus Joe for the WWE Title. I would love that, and that would be sick if Joe won the Royal Rumble. Then it goes on to face John Cena and is part of the SmackDown uh, Live roster. He'd be a great addition to that roster. So Cena versus Joe. That would make an incredible WrestleMania. I think they can put up a really, really good match. I'd say go as far as four, four and a half star for sure. Um, Triple H with Seth Rollins, that's basically a surefire thing after what we saw last night at TakeOver. If you didn't, Seth Rollins came out on NXT TakeOver and called out Triple H. And there's this whole brawl with the security guard. So that's definitely going to happen, it looks like. Um, Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt, that's probably going to happen too. A lot of people are speculating that Randy Orton will face Bray Wyatt at the end of this whole Wyatt-Orton ordeal. So, you know what, them having their final match at WrestleMania, I think that'd be a pretty good, uh, pretty good, you know, mid-card, the early in the card WrestleMania match. Um, Charlotte versus Bailey versus Sasha versus Nia Jax for the women's title in the Fatal 4-Way. Uh, I'm, I, I, I want to say I'm okay with that, but I literally think it should be a triple threat. I think they should leave Nia Jax out there. I don't think it's her time yet to be in a WrestleMania title match like that. Have it a triple threat just like last year, and uh, basically you're replacing Becky Lynch with Bailey, and maybe, you know, maybe Sasha can win, get a redemption on Charlotte this time. Maybe, uh, you know, something happens here. Maybe... Uh, uh, Ric Flair comes out and helps Sasha in by holding Charlotte this time, you know, something like that. I don't, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be okay. Or I would be okay with that, you know, but I don't think Nia Jack should be in the, the title picture this year's WrestleMania. What SmackDown does with their women's title. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of rumors saying that that's going to be a multi-woman match. You can't have that many multi person matches at WrestleMania. It just kills the buzz out of it. So we'll see what SmackDown does. Um, Jericho versus Owens, that's definitely almost a surefire thing too. This, as much as people don't want the friendship to end and I don't want it to end, I think that's actually going to happen at WrestleMania. And I really hope it's for the US title. I mean, what else are you going to do with the United States Championship right now, Ben? There's no one that's slated on Raw to be a good champion and to hold that title going into WrestleMania. So I hope they, those two face each other for the U S title and Shaquille O'Neal versus Big Show, whatever, man, I, I'm not even going to talk about that. Like, do we need to talk about that? Like, cool, man. It's just, a, it's just a, a celebrity showcase match. We're just going to move on from there. That's typical big show WrestleMania right there. Um, some more news about WrestleMania, about the WrestleMania pre-show. And this is very, very interesting because this is going to be a long WrestleMania if this is true. There are backstage talks right now to make the pre-show start at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, if you don't remember last year, the first pre-show match was at 5.45. So the first match would start at 5 o'clock. That is crazy. It's being said that this is due to the plethora of matches currently being drawn up for the event and could quite possibly be the largest WrestleMania card in history with as much as four to five pre-show matches. Jesus! Okay, I can kind of see why they would need to have like five pre-show matches because there's going to be a lot of matches where you're going to be like, okay, that should be in the pre-show if you're trying to include everyone into WrestleMania, but it's going to be a massive card if so. You're going to have five matches on the pre-show and like seven or eight on on the main card, man. This is going to be insane. If this is true, man, WrestleMania is going to be a long time. From five to 11 o'clock, oh God, man, that's that's just insane. That's crazy to think. So we'll see what happens with that. Um so next rumor news I want to talk about, and I'm probably going to rant about a little bit, is the rumor of Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Uh, the rumors came out earlier this month that Undertaker will be facing a Raw superstar at WrestleMania. Um, now rumors of Roman Reigns versus Taker, this could actually come to fruition. This is leaving many to believe that WWE is is uh, saying is trying to save Undertaker and John Cena for next year in New Orleans where the streak died. Um, I really do not want this fucking match to happen. I'm sorry for swearing here, guys. This is not a good idea. Seriously. The only way this works is if Roman Reigns becomes heel. And I really don't think Vince or that bucktooth idiot Kevin Dunn you know, wants that. He just, he just, he, I, 
I really don't think they want to turn. They don't want. Okay, they don't want Terry Roman Reigns heel. Let's be honest here. Vince wants him to be the golden boy, and they're both pissed off and scrambling backstage every single time he makes an entrance and he gets booed. Um, I really do think that this would be career suicide for Roman Reigns if they actually went through with this man. And and not only that, it would be. A, I can't say career suicide, but it would literally be a spit in the face to the Undertaker because you know that Roman Reigns is going to kick out of like six goddamn tombstones in like eight Hell's Gates. Like Roman Reigns kicks out of freaking everything and it's going to take one spear to just kill the dead man and that's going to be it. And then you're going to piss off everybody in that stadium if they actually go through this. This makes zero sense. I hope to God this is just a rumor and they do Undertaker and Finn Balor if it's a Raw superstar. They should be going Undertaker Cena this year, but it looks like they're trying to save that for next year. I don't know why they want to wait that long, man. These guys are ready to go and to end it all right now, but maybe WWE has other plans for Undertaker, so we'll see. But I really hope it's not... Oh, I really hope it's not Roman Reigns. I pray to God that it's not Roman Reigns. All right, so we're going to get into some other news here that are, are not really WrestleMania and Royal Rumble related. Um... There is a new universal title design being in, made right now, and this is actually accurate. Uh, West Coast Choppers, who actually designed many titles in the WWE in the past, posted on their Twitter yesterday saying that they are currently working on a new belt design for the WWE and posted a picture. If you go take a look in the picture, the picture is actually being said to be compared side by side to universal title and actually almost looks uh, identical. It's just slightly different. This could simply be an update. It's going to be an updated look as when WWE did it to the uh, world title to update their logo when they changed logos. So, you know what? I, if they, if they think of a better way to present the universal title, I mean, I don't mind it. You know what? It's growing on me. There's still a lot of people out there that hate the hell out of it. You know what? I really don't care. I think it, the, the red should be a little bit darker. I think me and Corporate Cappy agree with that. Um, maybe the background of the logo should be black. I don't know. It's just if they have a good idea for it and it's better than what it is now, then sure. If not, you know what? I'm not gonna be mad. I'm not gonna go to bed crying because the universal title looks like shit. Because you know what? It, it looks fine to me. That that's just me. I think it looks fine. But if WWE wants to go a different belt direction, then whatever. This could also be like uh, the new titles that's been rumored uh, for the IC and the U- US title. Maybe they, they shipped over the IC from overseas and they had West Coast Choppers make the US. Who knows? So we'll have to see when that is all finished. Um, next bit of news, as you heard last night, if you watched NXT TakeOver, Corey Graves is leaving the NXT commentary table. Um He's stepping away from it and will be placed. He'll be replaced by Nigel McGuinness. If you don't know who that is, um, he is a former Ring of, Ring of Honor commentator, and he also commentated with Michael Cole the WWE UK tournament. If you didn't see that, um, him and Michael Cole were highly praised for their work, and I agree they did, they did some extremely great commentary work for that tournament. So um, that's going to be interesting to see how Nigel McGuinness fits into the NXT commentary team and how uh, how they work together. Um, I think he's a great commentator. So you know what NXT. He just gained a really good commentator. Uh, Corey Graves will be remaining on Raw, and I don't know anything about 205 Live. He's going to keep doing that as well, but he will be on Raw for sure from now on. Um, he's an unreal commentator too, Corey Graves. Uh, him and uh, Austin Aries' work on 205 Live is hilarious. Them ripping on Ronaldo, you know, I had always criticized that. It's some good work, so... Good for Corey Graves, I guess. Um, you know, less of a workload, man. Doing all that, man, is crazy. Commenting that many shows is, is insane. So good for Corey Graves from stepping away from NXT and letting Nigel McGuinness come in. And NXT looks like they've gained an extremely good uh, commentator. Last bit of news, update on the Cruiserweights on Raw. So according to the Wrestling Observer, there is a recent doctrine or belief backstage that the current plan going forward is to keep the cruiserweight matches shorter on Raw from now on. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me, man? Seriously? If it couldn't get any worse for the cruiserweights on Raw, the current plan is to make them shorter and keep them shorter. <laughs> so why are they on Raw? I want to know. Who the hell knows out there why the Cruiserweights are wrong? You explain this to me. If you can explain this to me, a good explanation, then I will applaud you and I will buy a Cruiserweight belt and send it to you. If you can give me a, a valid, awesome, and it's got to be a perfect reason on why the Cruiserweights should remain on Raw and why they are on Raw. Because they're useless right now. Just get off of Raw. 
They need to have their own show. I say it every goddamn week on the Lowdown Show. They should be on Thursday nights or Wednesday nights from Full Sail University. They'll appreciate it more. Not the dead crowds after SmackDown. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, I watched 205 Live this morning. They had the pyro and everything. The crowd's just dead. Like, the first match of the night, the crowd was just, like, dead as hell. The only time they woke up is when Brian Kendrick faced a local jobber and they are chanting City... I don't even know what they're saying. They're saying something about Toledo. Whatever. That's the only time they're awake for the entire 205 Live. So they're useless on Raw. They're getting useless after SmackDown. They need their own show live on Wednesday and Thursday nights. They have the platform to do it on the network. Why not? Just do it. Get them off Raw. They're going to plan to make them shorter. How do you make them shorter? They only do a minute and 50 seconds every night. I just don't want to, I don't understand how can you make a, a match shorter than a minute and 50 seconds. You go out there and do a 30 second match, do one move. Oh, wow. What a great cruiserweight match. Did you see that one move he did? He won the match with it. Wow. Amazing. So impressive. No, it's God awful. It's garbage. It's hashtag dumpster fire. Get off of raw, get on your own show and just stay away. I can't believe that that's actually a freaking rumor right now. I really hope it's a rumor because if it's true, I got a lot to rant about on the lowdown show. So we'll see what happens with that. Other than that, guys, that is going to wrap it up, I believe. Yep, that is all the bit of news for today on episode number six on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, the Sunday Night Heat, the show where myself, Kyle Masters, discusses and or rants about training topics in the WWE. Remember, you can follow the show on Twitter at TSNA Show and join the conversation with the hashtag TSNH. You can also follow the podcast itself on Twitter at No Holds Bar WP, as well as listen to us on full info on YouTube and Spreaker. That's it for today's show, guys. I'm Kyle Masters. Stay fired up, y'all.